Hello, my name is Ashley Caldwell, and I'm the Vice President of Clinical Services and Workforce Development with the Illinois Primary Healthcare Association. Today, I'm going to talk with you about scholarship and loan repayment programs. So to start out, we're going to talk about the National Health Service Corps, um, which is a very well-known program. They just celebrated their 50th year, uh, providing awards to clinicians all across the country. So NHSC operates loan repayment programs, what they call the student to service loan repayment program, scholarship programs, and state loan repayment programs. So I'm going to share those details with you today. So the National Health Service Corps loan repayment program, this is a very well known loan repayment program for um, providers that are seeking positions in any of the disciplines listed on the slide. So physicians, PAs, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives, dentists, dental hygienists, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, LCSWs, um, not on the list I, is LCPCs, um, nurse specialists, marriage and family therapists, and licensed professional counselors. Um, when we talk about physicians being eligible for loan repayment, so in addition to psychiatry, we are also looking at geriatrics, family medicine, pediatrics, internal medicine, OBGYN, med peds. Um, so those are what we consider primary care um, for our um, physician disciplines. So the NHSC has the loan repayment program. Um, it opens its application cycle um, every year. So 2023 uh, program details are now out. Um, very similar to 2022, our award amounts range from anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 um, in the three various loan repayment programs. So essentially, um, to start, you have to be finished with your advanced education. So if you're a physician, you have to be completing residency. If you're a dentist, an NP, a PA, um, a behavioral health provider, you have to be finished with your advanced training. Um, and then you have to have a site picked out. So you have to find an eligible NHSC site to work at, and you either have to be working there or you have to have a signed employment contract. So if you are someone who graduates in the spring, summer, as long as you have signed a, um, a commitment to, to work there, so you've signed that employment contract, that is considered um, finding a site and having an obligation. <clears throat> you can choose full-time or part-time. Um, and your contract for the loan repayment program is actually with the National Health Service Corps and not with your employer. So when we talk about contracts range anywhere from two to three years, that two to three years is with the loan repayment program. So this is separate from your employment contract. So you will be negotiating and doing your employment contracts separately um, the NHSC contract is, is its own contract. Um, so it, it, with that being the case, if you would need to change sites, relocate, something like that, um, this commitment goes with you. So if you can't finish your service commitment at the original site, um, this goes with you and you have to find another eligible site to finish your um, service commitment at. Um, you have to have NHSC approval prior to making any job changes as long as you're participating in the program. So loan repayment is tax-free. So when we say $50,000, you get the full $50,000 to pay your loans. So you're going to get those um, two lump sum payments um, of $50,000. So if you're doing the traditional program, you're going to get those payments. Um, and you do have to provide proof that you paid your loans. Um, if you're someone who is interested in substance use treatment um, and you plan on doing that as a um, as a uh, physician, an NP, a PA, behavioral health providers, um, they actually have a loan repayment program that's seventy five thousand dollars. And then rural, if you're someone who's interested in working in a rural location, the awards are even larger. So um, what they use are what we call the HIPSA scores, so the Health Professional Shortage Area scores. Um, and usually what they do is they start at the very highest score, which is a 26, and they work their way down until they run out of funding. Um, so the HIPSA scores have not really been used as much in the last couple award cycles. Um, and so again, um, you still need to be working in a site that that's in a high need area. Um, but we are starting to see um, sites with lower scores being able to get people this loan or payment money. Um, but site, so eligible sites, those are FQHCs, um, federal prisons, Indian health service sites, 
Um, sometimes private practices, um, it's hard for private practices to meet all of the NHSC site requirements. So you can check those out on the NHSC website. Um, but you do have to be at an approved NHSC site. And the site will have that as a designation. So they will know whether or not they're approved for NHSC. Um, FQHCs are auto approved. So all of their sites are automatically approved. Um, so if you're talking to someone who's not an FQHC and they don't know if they are or not, um, they would have had to have gone through a process to become an NHSC site. Um, they do have a site called the Health Workforce Connector where you can see um, eligible sites. Um, I would say that the job postings there are not always accurate. Um, so if you are looking for a position in a certain state, I would recommend reaching out to the primary care association in that location to see if they're aware of any positions that are available for your discipline. So to be eligible for the NHSC loan or payment, you have to be a U.S. citizen or national, have that signed contract, and obviously have those government um, or commercial loans for your tuition, education expenses. Um, and then you have to be licensed in the, in the state where, where you intend to practice. So if you are a physician, you have to have your, you know, and you want to be in Illinois, you have to have your Illinois license. Um, Sometimes what we see is students that are graduating in May, June, um, it's very hard for them to get their license by the cutoff, um, which for this program, the cutoff for each year is like the middle of July. So if you are someone who uh, may not have their license by the middle of July, um, you can apply for this program when it reopens in typically anywhere from November to January. So you can apply in the next cycle, or you can think about some of the other programs that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So what are eligible and ineligible loans? Again, you can find all of this on their website. Um, but again, things that aren't eligible are going to be credit card debt, um, personal lines of credit, parent plus loans. Um, you know, if we've run into situations where someone, you know, maybe took out a mortgage to pay for health, you know, their health education. So just, you know, if you have a unique um, circumstance, you know, you might just want to really review um, the eligibility. Um, and NHSC also does a lot of office hours um, during their application cycle. So their application cycle is usually open for around two months, and they will do quite a few office hours where you can actually call in, ask questions, um, and get some feedback. Um, and then our office also helps with that too. So if you have questions, you can reach out to us. So there are a few other other um, other loan repayment options out there. So through the Illinois Department of Public Health, there is a state loan repayment program and an underserved physician workforce program. So IDPH is running two loan repayment programs right now. Um, these loan repayment programs are up to fifty thousand dollars for a two year commitment. Um, and with NHSC and IDPH, you can continue your contract beyond that initial two years. So if it's two years or three years, whatever your initial contract was, you can continue through the program one year at a time once that initial contract expires. So about six months uh, before your initial two-year contract expires, they will reach out to you and ask you if you want to continue in the program. And then at that point, you're only um, signing a new contract uh, for one year. Um, so you can do a total of up to seven years of loan repayment. We have lots of uh, clinicians that do that and are able to pay back, you know, all their educational loans. Um, so for these Illinois programs, obviously they have to be working in Illinois um, and you have to be in a shortage area. So the Illinois programs don't use the score. You just have to be in a shortage area. Um, and it doesn't have to be an FQHC. Um, you can, again, be working at a variety of the other sites that I mentioned, like with NHSC. Um, the state programs right now are currently only for physicians, dentists, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives, and physician assistants. And then the underserved physician workforce program is only physicians. Um, and so we are sharing the information for these. You can find um, both the websites um, full of all the information. Um, the IDPH programs um, typically run on a September to August cycle. So September 1, um, they'll you know have their new pot of funds that they'll be passing out. So if you're somebody who maybe can't get your application in, um, in time for the NHSC program open in, you know, winter, um, you could apply for the state program. 
um, you can only be under a contract and receiving award from one of these programs. So these programs do talk to one another, the NHSC and the state programs. Um, so you may only be receiving an award from one of them. Um, and then coming soon. So I, um, IPHCA um, had legislation passed last year that will create a new loan repayment program um, for providers working in FQHCs. So we're really excited about that. This will um, also increase the um, behavioral health um, providers that are eligible for loan repayment here in Illinois. Um, so we're excited about that um, and hoping to get that funding secured um, and get that program up and running very soon. So that would bring a third option um, just in Illinois. So that would be four total loan repayment options um, just through the NHSC and Illinois programs. So for those that are still in school, um, there are scholarship programs. I'm gonna give an example of what the NHSC scholarship program looks like. Um, again, there's a variety of these um, and lots of states offer specific health career scholarships. So I would definitely suggest doing some, some searching. Um, so essentially the NHSC program provides a um, full tuition plus stipend um, and will support essentially one-to-one. -one. So for one year of service, one year of commitment. Um, however, they do have a two-year minimum requirement. Um, so if you only receive one year of tuition, you still have to do two years of full-time work, but you can choose full-time or part-time. Um, they will tell you, so they do use HIPSA scores, so health professional area shortage scores. Um, so they'll use those shortage area scores. Um, and about a year before it's time to job search, they will give you that criteria because again, with all of these programs, you are choosing your site. You're not being placed anywhere. So this, the applications usually open in the spring. Um, you usually find out sometime in late summer if you're receiving the scholarship. Um, and then they'll work with the school to handle all the tuition. Um, and then you do get a stipend every month. Um, again, you can continue with this one for up to four years. Um, there is also um, a similar program called the Nurse Corps. So if you're someone who's in nursing, um, there's another scholarship option on that side. But um, the NHSC scholarship um, is eligible to medical students, dental students, um, NPs, and PAs, and certified nurse midwives. So that's who's eligible for the scholarship. NHSC also um, has a loan repayment that they call student to service. Um, I like to think of this as a hybrid loan repayment scholarship. So you have to be a U.S. citizen or national, again, pursuing medical, dental, NP, PA, um, nurse midwife degree. Um, you have to be enrolled as a full-time student and in your final year of your program. Um, so this application typically opens in the late summer. Um, so in your fourth year of dental school, you know, maybe your second year of PA school, this application becomes available. Um, and it is for students that are planning to enter family practice, internal medicine, PED, psych, OB, med peds, um, things like that. So what we consider primary care. Um, and so if you're pursue, planning to pursue one of those disciplines, you are eligible for the student to service loan repayment program. So they will award up to $120,000 in tax-free loan repayment funds. So they will pay this to you in four annual installments. So four $30,000 installments. Um, and in return, you are agreeing to work for three years um, full time in an underserved area. So the HIPSA score requirement for this is a 14 or higher. Um, so um, not a very high score. So there's lots and lots of sites that are eligible for this service commitment. Um, if you're not, if your balance isn't, you know, 120, maybe your balance is 115, you know, that's what your contract is going to be. Um, <clears throat> But if you're a provider who gets a scholarship, you get the student to service, or you're doing some of these things, um, <clears throat> obviously you can't have the scholarship and student to service. But if you are a student who receives one of these awards while you're in school, but you still have additional loans, when you finish with your service commitment, so say you get this $120,000 you um, are finishing your three-year service commitment at your site, but you still have some loans left. So you still have some, some loans to pay back. You can then 
um, transition into the loan repayment program. So you get to do that without going through the competitive cycle. So they give preferential funding um, to the providers that have already been in their programs so that you can transition into that loan repayment program. So it's a nice, um, nice to know that if you have, you know, we know that with the cost of, of health professions education, $120,000 does not cover all of that. So there are, um, you know, additional ways to help support you as you pay back those loans. So again, um, I just want to touch on benefits of working in a health center. So um, obviously a service oriented um, environment, you know, you're going to be working with mission driven individuals. Um, total compensation packages are competitive. So we often hear that, you know, it's assumed that health centers don't pay as well um, or don't have, you know, nice facilities. And that's not true at all. Our health centers are, many of them are brand new, beautiful facilities. They have competitive compensation. They offer continuing education time off, um, full benefits, you know, retirement, health insurance, all of those things. Um, the loan repayment, which obviously is sort of icing on the cake, you know, an, an extra essentially, you know, if you're thinking about that, you know, $50,000 tax free on top of what you're making, um, you know, through your employer, um, provide malpractice insurance. So again, you have that benefit of having malpractice coverage without paying for that. Um, Work-life balance, you know, so we have our clinics, you know, your schedule might be Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, maybe it's 40 hours a week, you know, four tens or, you know, five days a week, 40 hours. So there's a lot of work-life balance. And so our health centers really are careful with evening hours, weekend hours, uh, making sure that, you know, staff are not, um, you know, feeling that that burden and, and we don't want staff to feel burnt out. And we know work-life balance is really important. Um, also very limited to even no call coverage as well. Um, paid vacations, quite a few holidays, um, and 90% of our health centers are engaged in teaching. So lots of teaching opportunities. So if you're someone who enjoys teaching, would like to mentor, there's lots of opportunities. Um, many of our clinics are, um, their staff are adjunct faculty at different institutions. Um, and then there's also lots of research opportunities. So you can reach out to us for assistance and looking for a position. Um, and I know my colleague, Emma, um, will share more about that in our workforce program. So I just want to thank you um, and let you know that you can reach out with any um, scholarship and loan repayment questions that you might have. So good luck and let us know how we can help you. Thank you.